another video today we'll be creating the world's highest resolution photo shot on iPhone and then edited on an M1 chip it's gonna be around a gigapixel and we're using AI tools along with a bunch of um, photos so I'm gonna take around 74 photos of the, of the yard itself and then another 50 or 60 of the ground, the grass, and points of reference so that the, the algorithm can get a, a hold of points of interest. And I'll do this with the wide and the um, ultra wide angle lenses. And then we'll lock on, and then we'll create a, um, a bit map, and then a depth map. And then we'll take around 100 to uh, 100 and 350 photos roughly give or take and then we will chuck them in and let it process into a thousand megapixels roughly these are all in jpeg um just because i don't feel like the um, ai program can't batch process j um pro um pro raw at this time so we're just going to go ahead and do JPEG because it's easier and less time consuming. But we'll see. This is a fun little experiment. Um, so I wanted to take the photos and I'll get back to you in a sec. So I have taken all all the photos, um, 74 of them I think, um, and we're in this program. I didn't pay for it, it's a trial version, but um, it's, it works with Mac, Linux, and Windows. So it's it's called P PG GUI um Pro. Um and it works and it's optimized for M one so it works a lot better than um a lot of other things. And I'm sorry about the fan noise, um it has to be on because this gets really hot. When you're batch processing a gigapixel um photograph. So we're going to go in and I've already imported them in AirDrop, so we're going to go into Downloads, select All, Open, and I'm going to remove this one. And you, guys, and you do that by going into Remove or Reorder Images. And boom, there you go. Back to Project Assistant. Then you hit Align Images. And as you can see, it's aligning them. It takes some time, but it's not terrible. Especially for only 74 photos. Now, as I said, these are shot in, in JPEG. Um, just because this one doesn't... This program in particular doesn't process raw particularly well. Um, it kind of just turns out into black inky mess. Um, and I don't feel like going through and batch processing them all. So it's gonna say, yeah, it equals. So some of them are not aligned properly and they weren't able to find control points. So control points essentially means like points of interest that the AI can find. So, so I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna full screen this one. And then these are all the image overlaps.
Two and the blending fill holes. And then that. So look a bit wonky and this patch we totally forgot to take a photo of, so it's, it's gonna be a bit weird. And you set the precision as much as you can. So one and sixty fourth. So it's at the one sixty fourth. So that allows it to be much, much more precise. And then you select zero overlap. Well, it's not entirely perfect because it has to interpolate information that's not really there. And for some reason, I don't know why I can't just film grass, but okay. Alright, I'm still learning this program immediately, and it's not the greatest one out there, but... Oh well. So then what we'll do is we'll turn the brightness up a bit. And then use only adjustment sense. And then numerical, you can just leave that alone because it, it's um, fairly square and it's pre-lined. And you'll, you'll see these watermarks. I didn't pay for it. I was, I'm just experimenting. It's a free trial, so we'll see. And then I went to apply tone mapping, which screws it all up. So bring down the brightness. And you just get it kind of to where it looks normalish. This converts it to an HDR image. And then you add a bit of. Mess the curves a bit, get some contrast. That's too much contrast. But if I do this, you can see. Yeah, let's do that. You can see some of the imperfections in the edit in the um interpolation and guessing. This one's completely missing, but I don't really care at this point. I take photos of there for the record. Um, but I guess the wide angle didn't really want to do anything. But whatever, it is what it is. And then uh, we'll apply exposure fusion. And so those everything out makes the color a lot more dynamic. And you might see these little red lines. That's to show the image overlap and where it's cutting off and um, merging. Um, it's not perfect. This is not my favorite program ever. But it's the one that works best on Mac. So we're gonna exit out of this preview. And then you can see. So there's the, um, we're going to change the colors and optimize the images so they're all blended together. And then you can see that curves changed a bit. And this means that all of our images are gonna be the same color and same um, brightness and exposure compensation, hopefully. And just keep this all as normal. There's all our images, exposure HDR. Yeah, so this is just, this is where we would do it. I need to type, but I can't type at this angle. Changed it to JPEG. So J, oh, why is this so wonky right now? 
So, yeah, you can't see crap. So, it's a... That is the wrong solution. So it's a 500 million pixel photo. Sometimes it glitches out and they just send it to like a random resolution. Not sure why. And then you have your quality set to oh my God, 100% for JPEG. Because if it's not JPEG, it's going to take up a major cut on space. Is your panorama? You you can ignore the layers and then you send to batch stitcher. So that enables the M1 chipset to run in this natively. Um so I'm not sure why I say shift sharp, but let that run its course. Um I will time lapse this and then I'll be back when it's done. So it's almost finished processing. It's been about <clears throat> um, 20 minutes to half an hour. And as you can see, it's almost done. The MacBook Air is running a bit toasty. That just finished. You might see there is no preview. So what we're going to do is go into Finder into the folder, and it should be right here. And get a second dog. So it's two hundred and eighty three megabytes. iPhone thirteen pro. So it is something really cool because it is a JPEG. We can toss into Lightroom on the iPad and you see all the glorious, glorious detail. Sending.
As you see, it didn't slow that in, but everything else is slowed in pretty well. And just to prove it, your info. So if I may fix those So what we're gonna do is open this up in Lightroom. It's gonna take a second because it's such a massive file, but it, it should get it done. And there we go. So we're going to wait for it to load again. And then we're going to turn the exposure up a bit. Turn the contrast down, highlights up. Then we can zoom. And I can see the from here the capacitor on the telephone pole. See the doggo. And you can see prior right there that the sky was in flight interpolated. We can see all the grass texture there. Do a good job um so now we're going to do something, we're going to edit the photo. So I'm we'll pull off the Mac, send it over to the iPad, and this is why we buy iPads. This is the M1 iPad Pro. And as you can see, it's a bit underexposed. But as you can see, let's switch ones. There you go. Five hundred megapixels, iPhone thirteen Pro. And it's so big that 
if you had to load it into the default editor on, you know, like the, um, gallery app, you can change things. And I thought there's another thing. It's actually black and white, you know, sometimes you feel... But when you hit done, it just crashes out the home screen. So you have to use Lightroom. And from camera roll. Now these are all JPEG, keep in mind. Um, it's gonna take a second to load. Um, they're in JPEG just because um, the AI, as I mentioned, can't really ups, um, convert Pro Raw that this iPhone shoots in to a proper color space and not make it look ugly. Um, so it always shoots dark and it did it again, but whatever, it will change that, it's easier to do. And as you can see, it's loading, and there you go. And this is still a 500 megapixel photo, and look how like, smooth it is. So I'm going to edit this photo. And bring it around. As you can see. Now, um, most of the apps do not, is, cannot process this. So we're going to turn on the contrast. And as you can see, it just kind of fill in any of this. Um, for some reason, you know, the grass is right there. It's not my favorite program of all the time, um, but it is optimized for M1, and some of the mistakes are just because um, I'm brand new to this, and I'm just experimenting with some things. Um, but these are, these are always been tricky for my knowledge to shoot and edit. But now I'm doing it on an iPad, I'm editing 500 megapixels on an iPad. We'll give it some warmth, we'll give it some vibrance. Not too much, that's too much. I'm just doing some basic edits and then I'll, I'll put the, I'll link the um, final, final photo for you guys to just mess around with if you want in the um, description of this video below. So a bit of texture, bring out some of those As you can see, sometimes it just takes a second to load, um, just because of the sheer sure file size. And if we zoom in, takes a second to load. But, so, but you can see some of the information is not quite right. So the AI didn't get us correctly. There we go. Um, no, never mind. Uh, 
But we can zoom all the way in, and once that loads in, we can see the capacitors and everything on this telephone pole. Which, keep in mind, is if that is on the other end of the yard, like across, across the street. So this isn't a fake upscale resolution bullcrap thing. And yes, it does say the name of the company. I I know I didn't pay for it. It's a trial program. It's 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 trial. But it's free to use, so. I will live with it for now. I'm just experimenting, so. But I did a pretty good job with this guy. And honestly, this one went pretty good. I did mess up on the house a bit, if you can see it. But that's probably my fault for not taking enough photos of the um, side of the house with a normal, um, with a normal ones. There's some furniture there that's not supposed to be there. I was screen record this, but it, I am worried about it going over the threshold of land management on this part. You can zoom way far and see the brick detail. If I want to slow it, which doesn't. But that trash can is in perfect detail. Once it loads. And it was partially obscured and partially not properly exposed. But it guessed the most information and guessed the, the, the um, tile on this house, which is A, adjacent to our house down the block about a good distance. You can see the pattern on the shingles. From here. I still don't know why I can see out that, but whatever. You got everything else pretty well. Um, so yeah, very impressed. Even more impressed with iPad. Like this is 400 megapixels, it's going smooth. Five hundred, I mean. And yes, there are some glitches. Some are probably my fault. Um, because I've only used this program twice so far. But to date, this is the highest resolution photo shot on iPhone. It is half of a gigapixel. Which is the awesome megapixels, which is my next goal. So then, in order to export one of these, you have to go to export as, because everything else will, will not work out as display in your gallery app as a white square. So export and look at this. Real time rendering of all these effects. So it looks stupid, isn't it? Yep. You should just look quicker than this. Yeah, but I'll, I'll link this final photo for you guys to mess around with in, in the description below. And there you go. You save the image. 
Is in the gallery. And you want to see it's not showing up here. Um, it takes about a, a couple of seconds, but while we wait for it to load in. This is what happens if you do the same thing, but you don't set it as a um, JPEG. And it it's a bit glitchy, it's not the right, so I'll switch settings, and it broke it again. And that's why. So I'll we'll change. I'll come back when it's finished rendering. So we're back, it turns out we're in storage. So we're going to ace for again. And now it should work. Or crash. And that's the final product. I will link that one in the description below. Um, till next time. Um, yeah, stay fresh. I hope you guys enjoyed this longer video.